Joining me now from Portland is Yan Liang. She's Associate Professor of Economics and Department Chair at Willamette University. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's look ahead and preview President Xi Jinping's opening speech. What do you expect him to say and what do you think the message is that he's trying to send to the world? Um, this year marks the 40th uh, anniversary of China's grand reform and opening. So I think President Xi will emphasize that in the past um, 40 years, China is committed to opening its economy, to liberalizing its market, to engaging in economic globalization. Um, I think it will talk, he will talk about um, how China complies with the WTO rules, that it makes great contribution to global trade and economy, that it will step firstly um, opening up more of its economy and providing more market access to foreign companies. Um, at the same time, I think he would also criticize, you know, unilateralism, protectionism, the zero-sum game rhetoric. Um, and I think he would also make it clear that China opens its market not to yield to external pressure, but this is a long-term strategic planning that China is going to continue um, to liberalize its economy and join the global economy. This is a huge event. What do you think are some of the trending industries that will be represented at the expo? We know we'll see everything from agriculture to technology, but what are the biggest sectors you think China wants to import? Um, so far, China's imports have been concentrated in industrial goods. So um, that means, you know, a lot of um, um, uh, fuels and minerals, um, also manufacturing products. The manufacturing products import has accounted for 60 percent of China's past, ex uh, past imports. And fuels and minerals accounted for about 20 percent. And agricultural products accounted for about 10 percent. So I think still a lot of the products are in the industrial capital goods um, categories. That said, I think with China's continued economic growth and its emphasis on uh, consumer con uh, domestic consumption, I think there will be an increasing share of consumer goods, ranging from you know high-end baby um, strollers to avocados, mineral waters, a lot of these products that are um, you know, a trend in the Chinese middle class consumers. We know that several U.S. companies will be there in Shanghai despite the current U.S.-China trade war. No official U.S. delegation, but how much do you think China can accomplish in terms of some of the deals that can be made? And do you think that can offset some of the impact from the U.S. tariffs? Um, I think so. Um, the business community is pretty enthusiastic. So despite the fact that the U.S. government has not sent any delegation, um, there are about 180 companies from the U.S. who will be at the expo. So like you said, it ranges from, you know, automobile companies like General Motors and Tesla to, you know, hot dog gourmet um, uh, makers. Um, and so I think there is a lot sort of business interest um, in, you know, doing businesses with China. Um, and I think that it will help to uh, promote the U.S.-China trade, you know, despite the trade tension. But obviously, Washington, D.C. wants more than just uh, reducing the trade imbalances between two countries. Um, President Trump has a whole list of requests and um, demands. And so I think um, it may not uh, sort of... Uh, sort of give a breakthrough at the official negotiation level, but I do think the businesses will welcome Beijing's gesture um, to make the market more open for them. All right, Professor Yan Liang, thank you so much for joining us.